Here we have a fetal pig dissection. This is a male pig, and we'll be going over the anatomy as it pertains to Bio 182 zoology here at Golden West College. All rights reserved. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> We're going to start with uh, external anatomy. Here we have the pinna, which is commonly called an ear flap, and humans we call it an oracle. Uh, right here on the medial surface of the eye, you can see the nictitating membrane. Here are the vibrissae, which are the uh, whiskers, or the hairs of the chinny chin chin, if you will. And uh, before we did this dissection, we saw little uh, nipples here called mammae. So I will point to, there's a mammae. And then on the outside of this uh, boy pig, there's a scrotal sac that's remaining right here. This is the anus. And then we have the urogenital opening originally was positioned right here. And there we can see it right there, urogenital opening. Moving to the inside, we'll take a look at some of the muscles here. Here we have the triceps brachii. And here we have the, the deltoid. What's left of latissimus dorsi is right here, but it was a nice thin muscle right here, but it's gone. The external oblique has also been removed for our protection. Um, we have a trapezius that is not well defined up here. You can kind of see it right here. That's our trapezius. Uh, another muscle that's not well exposed is the masseter. It's the cheek muscle should be found right here. But the people who dissected this pig did not complete that task appropriately. I guess it is kind of a little bit. All right, uh, we'll go look at the legs now. Um, so we have biceps femoris right here. Wrong way, that's how it goes. Uh, this little bump right here, right there, is a little bump. And that's the gastrocnemius. Opening up the inside of the pig, we're supposed to see a couple other muscles. So it's supposed to be a gracilis right here, which in human is the hamstring. And in pigs, they call it the human string. The human string. <laughs> person's not supposed to talk. Um, and, then, and then the sartorius. So this pig has been very, very uh, well exercised. Sartorius is probably, probably was right here. This is a piece of it right there. There's our sartorius. We have a superficial pectoralis muscle right here. And then down deep inside the arm we have a biceps muscle, it should be found. So the human bicep is between the elbow and the shoulder. This bicep should be right in this area here. I'm not gonna waste your film uh, by exposing it, but if I dug down here, just real quick, I should be able to expose it, but it's, it's gonna be down in there. And it looks like a little muscle, it's cute. Uh, in terms of uh, mouth anatomy, we'll open up the tongue and kinda, or open up the mouth here and kinda look at stuff. We have the fungiform papilla, and there's the tongue. These are cute little teeth. Of course, this is a fetal pig, so he never actually got to use his teeth. The hard palate here, the soft palate here, and dorsal to the soft palate. So if I kind of hook under it, see that there's a big space where I went into? It's called the nasopharynx. This flap is the epiglottis. And then over the top of the epiglottis, we have a passageway called the glottis. And then we can see the um, pharynx is the back area of the mouth here. If we close the mouth, we look at a lateral view, we can see the submaxillary gland right here. Most people's dissections did, did it laterally, so the submaxillary would be visible here, but they got theirs ventrally instead. Looking at the neck, we find thymus gland right here. There's a thyroid gland. Oh, I saw it earlier, oh my gosh. There's a thyroid gland. Oh, that is the thyroid gland. It's not quite the shape it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be round, so there's our thyroid gland. Again, it's supposed to be a, a circular kind of uh, shape. And then, We'll get into the nitty gritty of the abdominal cavity here. So obviously there's been some organs have been removed. Uh, lungs will not be included in this uh, quick tour of the pig because they're gone. Uh, the heart was here. There, it's back. The pig's gonna be just fine. Here's our diaphragm, right there. And we lift that up, we find the liver. This is on umbilical vein that was originally attached. Thusly. We have underneath the liver a gallbladder here, and then here's the stomach right there. Kind of just underneath the stomach, we have a flappy thing. This is the spleen right there, and then the pancreas is going to be a little hard to see on the film. It's the, kind of this color. It's a real spongy type of gland right there is the piece of the pancreas. If we follow the stomach posteriorly, we have the pyloric valve and the duodenum, and then that branches into the rest of the small intestine. Here we go. It, 
holding the small intestine into place and supplying blood vessels to it is the mesentery. And then we have the large intestine, which is a greenish kind of color. Officially, this is called the, col um, yeah, the colon. And then we have a piece that sticks off right there. See this piece? It doesn't go anywhere. That's called the cecum. The large intestine that kind of ends with the rectum, which leads to the anus that we saw earlier. All bladders right up there. Also associated with the uh, pig, we have the urogenital system. So let's go through that real quick. Here's the kidney. And the space the kidney was originally in is called the cisterna magnum. And here's a, ur a ureter. This tube leads from the kidney to the urinary bladder, which is here. The urinary bladder then leads to the urethra, so it's mounted backwards. It goes back down this way. And if we fold this down, sure enough, we can see urethra leading here, looping back through here, and then this is urethra here as well. Oh, just the big one ending in the urogenital opening. This pig's reproductive system was pretty well dissected. We can see the testis here. We can see the C-shaped structure around the testis called the epididymis here. We have a flat ribbon-like structure leading from the uh, area here, and here's a good example of it right there. That flat ribbon structure right here is the epididymis. And originally it goes through a passageway called the inguinal canal. While that passes through the area, so does the spermatic artery and vein. Here we cannot tell the difference between the two of them because the stain didn't quite take like it should have. As the urethra passes through the pelvis, we have a bulbourethral gland. So we can see here's our urethra, and there's our bulbourethral gland right there. Just ignore these feces that are on there. Little bit of right there. Vast deference. Vast deference, just again, in case you missed it on the film the first time, is uh, so it leads from here, it's this flat ribbon right there. Right there. Oh, yeah, esophagus is not important. <laughs> so I've been told that I missed the esophagus on the digestive tract. Um, and the arteries. Okay. And then here's the esophagus right there. And it leads to the stomach. Of course, lots of stuff has been removed here. And uh, let's go check out the circulatory system, shall we? This will be fun. So we'll start our circulatory system here in the neck. Now, I just did a small window of dissection here so that we could see the internal jugular is the blue one. And we can see the carotid artery is kind of the tan colored thing that I'm hooking right now. That's the carotid artery. The external jugular is this large blue thing right over here. That's the external jugular and other circulatory system things we have to look at. Uh, in the shoulder, um, I don't see them this moment. In the shoulder are two large uh, blood vessels, a red one and a blue one, and this is supposed to be our uh, subclavian artery and vein. The students who dissected this one did not display that for us. Let me see if I can just really quickly get through and see what happens here. Sometimes you get lucky and you can just go at things with a blunt probe and they show up. That looks like a subclavian artery. Let's see if we can get crazy and find the vein. That's a muscle. Let's just get rid of that. It's not important. I don't see the vein this moment. So I don't want to waste too much fi film time. So we'll move forward. Uh, actually, we're going to move posteriorly. Again, that's our umbilical vein. And then attached to our umbilical cord. And you flip it down. You find the urinary bladder right here. And then we have umbilical arteries right there. The arteries between the ribs are called intercostal arteries. We can see a good example of one right here, a little red line. And then we have a couple more things to see before we go take a look at the heart. This big tough thing right here, this is the aorta. And then extending from the aorta, there's a spermatic artery right there. And then if we kind of push this to the side, we can see a common iliac artery right there. And usually right next to it, we're going to find a common iliac vein. And, okay, so it would be there and it would be blue. If I could find it, it would be there in blue. Again, the dissectors who did this one didn't find that for us. We'll move forward. Anyway, it'll be blue and it'll be right there next to the red one. In fact, it might be, no, it's not it. Uh, associated with the kidneys. So the kidneys are involved in the post cava, which is this blue thing right here. 
and the um, and the aorta. If you kind of flip them over, oftentimes you can see a connection. This red connection is the renal artery right there. And on the other guy over here, I think I saw a renal vein. Yeah, this that little blue guy right there is a renal vein right there. So we have a renal vein that's supposed to go to the posterior vena cava and a renal artery that's supposed to go to the aorta. And then let's, so let's get in the heart real quick here before we run out of time on our uh, memory chip here. This uh, creepy thing sticking out the top, this is the latex that was in the anterior vena cava or the precava. And then we can see our post cava here, right there dangling down. Usually across the front of the heart, you're supposed to, be, supposed to be able to see coronary arteries and veins. I don't see it on this one. They're, it didn't take the stain. There's our pulmonary trunk looking inside. So I've moved that oracle to the side and we can see the aorta right here. The first branch on the aorta sticking out right here. Maybe we can get inside it. It is the brachiocephalic trunk. And then we have the subclavian artery. And then if we follow these two structures, we can see that the aorta comes from underneath and then kind of merges. And then it's like, well, is this the pulmonary trunk here or is it the aorta here? And in fact, both those blood vessels are the same thing in this area. We call this connection between the two the ductus arteriosus. We'll open the heart and go inside. Here we find the right atrium, the right ventricle, and the valve between the two. You can see, you see a little flap of it right here. It's called the tricuspid valve. These are chordae tendinae. This is our ventricular septum. We have our left atrium here, which is a little mangled, our left ventricle here. And again, between the two, we should find a little flap. That doesn't count. We should find a little flap. There we go, right there. That's a part of the bicuspid valve. This is a fetal uh, pig, so we have a connection between the two atria, and that should be shown. I had it earlier. Anyway, just imagine that this goes through. Uh, I can't, I don't want to destroy the heart to find this hole that should be there. I mean, I could just make a new one, but I don't want to do that. So the foraminal valley is supposed to allow passage of the blunt probe from the right atrium to the left atrium. And again, we're not finding it this moment. Endocardium. The membrane on the inside of the heart shown here is the endocardium. It kind of has a shiny piece. You can see it right there. All right. And this concludes the tour of the fetal pig for Bio 182.